All right, new day, new Alienware to repair. And this time we have an Alienware 15R3. This is a 15 inch gaming laptop. And the customer says that it randomly shuts down and shorts out the AC adapter when it's plugged in. So let's see if we can get this one figured out. Okay, let's see if this turns on. We hit the power button, nothing happens. Let's go ahead and connect the power. So pay attention here, let's plug it in. And it looks like it shorts out the AC adapter. So whenever I plug in the charger, it went into protection mode and shut off the AC adapter. That means that this laptop has an internal short. So we'll have to open it up and see what's going on with it. And it's open. All right. This laptop looks pretty dusty. Look at all these fans. I bet this laptop overheated. Hopefully it's not the GPU or CPU that shorted out. We'll see if we can get it figured out. Um, but unfortunately we can't access this motherboard without taking the entire chassis apart here. So I'll have to continue taking this apart. All right, we'll unplug the battery. This was the keyboard. Okay, and we got the bottom off. Now we can access the inside and we can take a look around real quick. Wow, get a load of the dust in here. Okay, well, I can assume that this machine has been overheating for a long time. Let's see if this fan. But let's go ahead and take some measurements to start out. So I have the battery unplugged and we're gonna go ahead and put the voltmeter in continuity mode. Let's get the microscope out. But we're gonna start by measuring the input jack, which is right here. We're gonna measure from ground to plus, ground to plus here on the DC jack. And there's no short there. We'll check the first MOSFET, second MOSFET. So the current sense resistor, there's a dead short on the current sense resistor here. So that means the main power rail has a short on it. And on this machine, the most co common cause of this would be on the CPU or GPU. So let's go ahead and check to see how many ohms we're getting on this main power rail. And that will help tell us if it's the GPU or CPU. So if we measure this, we're getting we're getting one ohm. So one ohm is most likely gonna be the GPU, but we'll go ahead, we're gonna to have to pull the heatsink off and then we can measure the coils on the GPU and compare. That's right. So we're gonna to have to actually pull this board out because you can't take the heatsink off without pulling the entire motherboard out because the fans plug in underneath the motherboard. The best design ever. All right, and the motherboard is out. Pull the heatsink off so we can take a look at the GPU and CPU. I am uh, completely getting dirty from all this dust that's coming out of this span. You can see it's getting all over my desk here. So we'll have to clean this out thoroughly. Maybe we'll send it over to the greatest technician. He can clean it out for me. Okay, so here's the, the bare board. So as you remember, the main power rail had, we were measuring a one ohm. So I, I just have it in ohms mode right now. So we're just measuring how many ohms it is. We're getting 1.2 ohms, okay? So what we need to figure out is I'm just gonna check to see if it's shorted to the CPU or GPU right off the bat. And the way we can check that is the coils here on the CPU and GPU, here's the coils on the on the GPU and here's the coils on the CPU. If we measure those and it, we have a, a short through one of these DR MOSFETs straight to the main power rail, then we'll have the same, uh, the same ohms measurement. So we'll start, the CPU will have higher ohms. So we'll start with this one. It's probably not gonna be the CPU. Let's see, we'll just check any of these. Oops, we'll check any of these. 
Oh, we got one ohm. Okay. We got 1.1 1 .1 ohm. We're going to check the GPU now. And the GPU is... The GPU is measuring 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So it looks like most likely the main power rail is short to one of these power stages for the CPU. We don't know which one. We can look at them and we can guess. Let's take a look at this one. We can look for one that's discolored. But I can't really tell. And at this point, we're, we're, just, we're just guessing that the power rail is shorted to the CPU because it has the same ohms measurement. But we can go ahead and do voltage injection and see if the CPU starts getting hot. We're going to start with a very low voltage. And then we're going to figure out which power stage is actually shorted out. Now, if it is shorted to the CPU, 99% of the time, this motherboard is toast. Okay. I've been able to fix quite a few of the GPUs whenever they're shorted to the GPU. I just change out that MOSFET and it's pretty good at protecting itself. But on the CPU, all the voltage goes straight there to try to turn the board on at the starting and that's why it shorts out. So most likely this board will need to be replaced at that point. And this is an older motherboard and most people don't choose to end up fixing this machine so uh, or replacing the motherboard. The cost is not worth it. But let's go ahead and do some voltage injection. Let me pull up the thermal camera and get that going. All right, the thermal camera I'm using is the FLIR 1 Pro, uh, mounted to the bottom of my microscope here, and then I have it connected to my cell phone so I can see it on the display here. And I have it set up where you guys can see it on the screen. We're gonna inject voltage on the main power rail on that current sets resistor. We might get lucky and it may just be a capacitor. If it's a crack capacitor, then this then this motherboard will definitely be repairable and it'll be worth fixing. All right, so I'm gonna inject 0.8 volts. That's not enough to harm anything if it ends up being the CPU. And we're gonna keep an eye on the CPU. There's the CPU and GPU. So we wanna pay attention to those. So right now it looks like it's warm, but it's just a reflection. All right, it's the CPU getting hot. Did you see that? So with the CPU getting hot, it's going to be one of these power stages. We don't know which one it is. If my thermal camera, sometimes I'll be able to see which one's heating up. So we can do that. We can take a look. But I'm not seeing it. So here's the trick I'm going to use. Here, I'll turn down the voltage a little bit. We don't need it that high. All right, so here's the trick I'm going to use. I take one of these wires. And I'm going to hook it to ground on the motherboard. And then as I'm injecting voltage, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to short one of these to ground. And that will send the voltage straight back to ground. And then the sound on the voltage injection tool will, will change. And so you could tell which one of these MOSFETs is actually shorted out. Because what's going on is that one of these MOSFETs are shorted, uh, shorting the main power rail straight through this coil here. Shorting the coil straight to the CPU. By connecting a wire to this coil, it will set it straight to ground and then it will increase the current and it will tell me which one of these MOSFETs are bad. And there it is. So it's one of these three. So these three are, I think, are hooked up in parallel. Let's take a look here. They are. So you can see the outputs of these are all hooked up in parallel. So one of these three MOSFETs is going to be the issue. We don't know which one of these is shorted out, but it's sending the full 19 volts through this, into this, and then into the CPU. Um, let's see. Let's see if any of them look a little weird. Look at this. There's a solder ball right here. Look at this right here. There's a solder ball on this one. Do you think this could be an issue? I mean, this is all one pad, so it's not a, a big deal that there's a solder ball there, but 
this could be a symptom that this could be the issue, that this one could be the bad one. Let me measure and see if we get any different measurements here. Okay, 4.8. I measure this one to here. 4.8. Four point eight. So it's not really telling me. So again, we don't know which one it is, but it's going to be one of these three. I usually go for the one that's in the middle because that's the one that's going to get the hottest because they're all getting hot, but they can't dissipate heat fast enough. And because this one has a solder ball right here, it could mean that this one got so hot that it pushed some solder out the side here. So let's go ahead and remove this one and check and see if the short's gone or not. All right, a little bit of flux. We're gonna use, we're gonna do full heat. We wanna get in there and get out of there as fast as possible. This board is very thick and it will take a long time to heat up. All right, it should be getting close. I'm gonna kinda of wiggle it a little bit. Okay, it's about to come. Okay, and the chip is out. Let's go ahead and clean it up real quick. So while the board's hot, I wanna go ahead and add some fresh solder, clean up the area a little bit. Okay, let's, let's check to see if the short is gone now. And the short is gone. So we chose correctly. We chose the right one. And it was because it was in the middle. Because it was in the middle between the other three. I know that those usually get hotter. And then that one also had that little solder ball sticking out the side. So we chose correctly. Let's go ahead and get it replaced. There's a very low probability that this, that this machine is going to work but we're gonna go ahead and replace it and we'll give it a test. Go ahead and get this new chip installed. All right, the chip is installed. Let's go ahead and clean up the area. All right, now that we have the chip installed, I'm gonna make sure the whole area is cleaned up and then we can test for our short again. Okay, we have it in continuity mode again. Let's take a look at that current sense resistor. And the short is gone. All right, so this motherboard should now turn on, but will it work? That's the question. The CPU is probably the CPU probably took a full 20 volt jolt and burned it out, but we're gonna go ahead and put it back together and see if we can get this thing to post. I think there's probably a 1% chance that this motherboard survived. I'm gonna take this outside and clean it. This is pretty disgusting. I'll be right back. All right, much better. Got it all cleaned up, took it outside. We'll put some fresh thermal paste on this. So I'm wondering what you think caused this motherboard's MOSFET to burn out on the CPU. Hmm. Keep your, keep your fans and heat sinks clean, kids. Wow, this thermal paste is very dried up. It's, it's almost rock hard. Okay. Just put it, some of the Arctic silver on there. We don't need anything fancy right now while we're testing. All right, the heat sink is installed. Let's install the motherboard back into the laptop so we can do a test. All right, the motherboard is installed. Let's give it a test. Let me reset my charger. Okay, I got the charger reset. And let's plug in the laptop. All right, we're not getting it. It's not shorting out the AC adapter now. Let's see if we can turn it on.
Press the power button. We got current draw with the 30. Let's see if it comes back on. You know, one thing I forgot, I don't have any memory in there. All right, now I have the memory installed. Let's try again. Press the power button. Point four nine, and went back down, and it should come back up. Went to a half an amp for a second, then shut back off. Point four nine again, shut back off. So this could be the startup phase because it hasn't, it, it's been unplugged, or it's having a hard time starting up the power rails. Okay, we got a blink code. One. One, two. So that's a two one. And let's look up what a two one is. All right. Two one is a processor failure. So it's exactly what I was thinking. Though unfortunately, when that MOSFET failed on one of the power stages for the CPU, it sent the full 20 volts straight to the CPU and burned it out. Um, the because the MOSFET was shorted, it kept putting the AC adapter in protection mode because it kept seeing a, a lot of current draw. And so even replacing that MOSFET didn't fix anything. So the short is gone now, but the CPU has failed and taken all that voltage. So, and I guess the question would be, why did this happen? Well, you could obviously see that the fans were completely kicked and that it was overheating. And those MOSFETs get really hot because it's sending a lot of current to the CPU. So this, this, this motherboard's not gonna be fixable. I'll offer them a motherboard replacement. Um, we'll see if they go with, for that. If they don't, then uh, this is probably gonna be a system where I'll ship it back to the customer broken or they'll just have me scrap it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I saved another laptop.